And this is the first poem that I read. Thou hast made me endless, such is thy pleasure. This frail vessel thou emptiest again and again, and fillest it ever with fresh life. This little flute of a reed thou hast carried over hills and dales, and hast breathed through it melodies eternally new. At the immortal touch of thy hands, my little heart loses its limits in joy, and gives birth to utterance ineffable. Thy infinite gifts come to me only on these very small hands of mine. Ages past and still thou pourest, and still there is room to fill. A simple poem, but I think for me, a newcomer to the Kathmandu Valley, my first time outside the United States right out of college, suddenly here was a spiritual intellectual connection with a poet whose name I only learned when I picked the book off the shelf. Over the years, I've learned that there are all kinds of intellectual and academic questions one might raise about this book. Um, it's a translation from the Bengali. How much is it faithful to the original Bengali of uh, Tagore's own poetry? I don't know Bengali. It's not one of my research languages. A and scholars have pointed out that it's missing here and there. Uh, certain things have changed when you read it and hear it in Bengali and you hear it in English. Uh, some people have speculated that William Butler Yeats, master of the English language, helped Tagore to polish the poetry and make it sound better in English. All kinds of questions have arisen about it. Th I think, though, that over the years what has struck me is that whatever the intellectual, indological, east-west history of the book, however he cooperated with Yeats in the composition, the translations being polished, and so on, it's a marvelous example of something that works across cultures globally. I think it's one of the most well-known books of Indian poetry, simply, again, Gitanjali, Garland of Songs. And it struck to me, me is that all my learning and all my PhD studies and all the books I've written and all the things I've learned over the years, there's a certain kind of symmetry in return that you start with something simple, an intuition that something is beautiful and it touches your heart. And then 20 years later, 30 years later, now 50 years later, you can go back and read it and it still makes a great difference to you. It, it's not a book that I've written academic articles about, but I think when I introduce Hinduism to different people, students, people in my church, and so on like that, I say, take Gitanjali. Take the beautiful poems of this book and start with them, and you'll begin to open up this new world of, of Asia, the wisdom of Bengal, and one of the great geniuses of world history, Rabindranath Tagore.